Hey geeks and gamers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to upgrade my 3080 to this, the 4070 Ti from Gigabyte. The Eagle has landed. Okay, let's start by taking a look at the system we're going to put the 4070 Ti into. All right, this is my machine before the upgrade to the 4070 Ti. The CPU is an AMD 5900X, water-cooled by a 240mm AIO. RAM-wise, the PC features 64GB of DDR4 memory. And yes, it is quite dusty inside. Now, let me quickly show you a close-up of the new 4070 Ti before we compare the size and specs to my old 3080. Specs-wise, the benchmark results should be quite interesting. The comparison of the specs is quite interesting with regard to the benchmarks. The 3080 has a higher CUDA core count, much wider memory bus, and last but not least higher power consumption. The 4070 Ti on the other hand has a much higher boost clock and the newer architecture. With a below 300 watts power draw, will the 4070 Ti be able to beat the 3080? Or am I more side grading instead of upgrading? Well, let's see. Okay, the Eagle has landed, the card is in the PC. Now it's time to benchmark. Were there any issues? No, I just plugged it in. GeForce Experience popped up and was like, there's a new driver. Installed it. Done. Awesome. Now let's benchmark the card and put it up against the 3080. Okay, let us start with classic rasterization benchmarks. The specs are displayed on top. All benchmarks are performed at 1440p resolution, as these cards are just bought at 1080p. First up is 3 Mark Time Spy. While the CPU score of course stays roughly the same, we see a nice uplift of around 30% in the GPU score. This is a great start, but this is of course a synthetic benchmark. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla at the Ultra preset. No DLSS is used unless stated otherwise. We see a nice uplift across the board here from the 0.1% lows to the max FPS numbers. We gain a lot of performance. The average FPS numbers of the 4070 Ti are about 25% higher compared to the 3080. Awesome! Another hard to run title enters the ring. Red Dead Redemption 2 on my custom balance preset using Vulkan. We might not see a big performance increase in the max FPS numbers here, but the average FPS of the 4070 Ti are around 30% higher than the 3080. Nice. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the highest preset, but without ray tracing. This title only incorporates lightweight ray tracing anyway, and I kind of forgot to run a test with RT enabled. 
the average FPS see a nice bump up by 23% in pure rasterization performance. Now for Cyberpunk 2077 without ray tracing at the Ultra preset. We will test ray tracing performance in several titles in a moment, so keep watching. Cyberpunk is another hard to run title, CPU and GPU wise. While we see a 18% uplift in the min FPS, the average FPS is only increased by 11%. Oh, better than nothing, I guess. Last but not least in the rasterization category, Watch Dogs Legion. At the ultra preset with the ray tracing disabled. While we do not see any uplift in the max FPS, we might just be engine or CPU capped here, we gain around 19% average FPS with the 4070 Ti. So, to sum it up, in pure rasterization tasks, the 4070 Ti scored around 22% higher than the 3080. Cyberpunk was a kind of bummer here, with only an 11% uplift in the average FPS. Perhaps something went wrong, or I did something wrong there, cause all other benchmarks showed an uplift above 20% at least. Let us just continue and test the ray tracing performance of the 4070 Ti in several titles. And we are back to Watch Dogs Legion, this time at the Ultra preset with Ultra Ray Tracing enabled. Still, we are not using DLSS to put as much pressure as possible on the card. As you can see, we gain around 22, oh, sorry, 26 to 27% in the 1% lows and average FPS, and still 22% in the max FPS. Quite impressive. We are even breaking through the magic 60 FPS average barrier with a 47 DTI. And now for Cyberpunk at the Ultra Ray Tracing preset. Interesting enough, this time we see a 28% uplift in the average FPS of the 4070 Ti compared to the 3080 with ray tracing enabled. This is more in line with what I expected. Perhaps I really made a mistake in the Cyberpunk rasterization benchmark. Still, some people would say this title is kinda unplayable with those FPS numbers, so let us activate DLSS in quality mode in Cyberpunk and take a look at the performance numbers. As you can see, the min FPS are the same, weird but okay, while the average FPS see a performance boost of 30%. This is awesome, and DLSS is one of the reasons I sticked to NVIDIA. I will also do dedicated DLSS 3 testing once more games are out, so subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. Last but not least, Port Royal, which is a dedicated ray tracing test in the 3D benchmark suite. We gain an around 25% higher score with a 4070 Ti in pure ray tracing in this test. Well done, NVIDIA. So, taking the 3080 as the 100% performance baseline in rasterization with ray tracing max settings enabled, we gain an uplift of around 26% in performance with a 4070 Ti. Sounds good to me, what do you think? Conclusion time, the 4070 Ti is definitely a worthy upgrade to my workstation PC. Even in classical rasterization, the uplift in performance uh, compared to the 3080 is amazing and it gets even better when you enable ray tracing and I love good graphics, I'm a graphic beep and yeah, it's definitely worth it. And with DLSS uh, 3.0, and the AV1 encoder on the 4070 Ti. This card is future proof, and I'm looking forward to, yeah, utilize it fully. So hell yeah, I'm a happy bugger now, and this is not the end, because I will build a new gaming PC soon, going from the AMD 5900X to a i7 13700K. I will utilize the RAM from that machine, because I can use the DDR4 memory still, so if you want to see a video about that upgrade, in, featuring the 4070 Ti again then, but comparing it to this machine, um, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, friends. Alpha, over and out.